Let's learn the unit circle. So first we're going to go over some examples of patterns that you can find in the unit circle that will greatly help you to memorize it much faster. First of all, you'll notice that each of the four quadrants can be represented by one of these equations in terms of what the actual values are that you'll most likely need to remember. In the first quadrant, all of the values can be represented as pi over n. In the second quadrant, the top number is always one less than the bottom number. In the third quadrant, the top number is always one more than the bottom number. And finally, in the fourth quadrant, the top number is always one less than double the bottom number. You'll also notice that the denominators can be easily reflected across both the y and x axes. This makes it a lot easier to recreate these quickly if you simply have one of the quadrants, for example, the first quadrant. Finally, the actual values at each of those points are also symmetric across both the y and x axes. Again, this makes it a lot easier to simply recreate them given the values for one of the quadrants, for example, quadrant one. The only modification that you need to make is correctly changing the sign. For example, in the second quadrant, you will need to make the x values negative, and in the fourth quadrant, you'll need to make the y values negative. In the third quadrant, you'll need to make both values negative. All right, let's do a practice problem. Here we have all of the information that we need to memorize in order to fully recreate the unit circle very quickly. Basically, we have some information from the first quadrant and information from each of the four uh, corners, if you will. First, we're going to reflect the denominators across the x and y axes. Then we'll reflect them again across the x and y axes to fill in the third quadrant. Now, remember that in the fourth quadrant, the top number is always one less than double the bottom number. Similarly, in the second quadrant, the top number is always one less than the bottom number. And in the third quadrant, the top number is always one more than the bottom number. Then, to fill in the actual values, we need to simply reflect the values from the first quadrant across the y and x axes, remembering to change the signs as appropriate. And then for the third quadrant, we can reflect it again, and there we have it. A full unit circle, pretty easy to remember with very minimal information. Hopefully this video was helpful, and if it was, please give it a like and maybe share it. Thank you.